From behind the long concealing drape of the curtain, a voice with flickering serpentine hiss whispers, <laughs> His mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. <laughs> she is way too casual about her kids stabbing other kids and beating them up and then getting arrested and then going to jail. I think this whole family has issues. Warning! Escalialet! Wait! Says Liu. They all looked up to see him holding a knife. Oh, this again? So hello everyone, and welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Layla. And today, we're going to be reading some original creepypasta stories. So... Everybody was an edgy 13 year old at one point, and a lot of us were into creepypasta. I was one of those teenagers that lied about being into creepypasta to give myself an edge because I didn't have a lot of interests. So when people would be like, what are you into? I'd be like, um, creepy stuff? Oh, what kind of creepy stuff? Um, creepypasta? I have never been on Creepypasta's website. I have never read a Creepypasta. I just straight up lied to people back in the day. So yeah, I have never read any of the original Creepypastas in any way, shape, or form, but they still exist. People still talk about them. People still make fan edits out of this stuff. So I thought it would be cool to check it out. See what I've been missing out on. See what I used to lie about being into. <laughs> There's no need to be scared, okay? I'm holding your hand, you're holding mine. I'm gonna be here throughout the whole video. If you get jump scared easily, if you get scared easily, don't. Cause I promise you, this is older stories. They're really not gonna be that scary. So grab your snacks, cuddle in, and let's just get started. I'm part of the cool club today, and I have an iPad with me. So it's October 30th, 2010, and an anonymous author posted the infamous creepypasta Herobrine. I had recently spawned a new world in single-player Minecraft. Everything was normal at first as I began chopping down trees and crafting a workbench. I noticed something move amongst the dense fog. I have a very slow computer, so I have to play with a tiny render distance. I thought it was a cow, so I pursued it, hoping to grab some hides for armor. It wasn't a cow, though. Looking back at me was another character with the default skin, but his eyes were empty. I saw no name pop up, and I double-checked to make sure I wasn't in multiplayer mode. He didn't stay long, he looked at me, and quickly ran into the fog. I pursued out of curiosity, but he was gone. I continued on with the game, not sure what to think. As I expanded the world, I saw things that seemed out of place for the random map generator to make. Two by two tunnels in the rocks, small perfect pyramids made out of sand in the ocean, and groves of trees with their leaves cut off. Ooh. I would constantly think I saw the other player in the deep fog, but I never got a better look at him. I tried increasing my render distance to far whenever I thought I saw him, but it was to no avail. I saved the map and went on the forums to see if anyone else had found the pseudo player. There were none. I created my own topic telling of the man and asking if anyone had a similar experience. The post was deleted within five minutes. I tried again, and the topic was deleted even faster. I received a PM from a user named Herobrine. Herobrine. Herobrine? Herobrine. I received a PM from a user named Herobrine containing one word. Stop. When I went to look at Herobrine's profile, the page for afforded. For afford. <laughs> I received an email from another forum user. He claimed the mods can read the forum user messages, so we were safer using email. The emailer claimed that he'd seen the Mystery Player 2 and had a small directory of other users who had seen him as well. Their worlds were littered with obviously man-made features as well and described their Mystery Player to have no pupils. This is actually a little bit creepy. Ooh. About a month passed until I heard from my informant again. Some of the people who had encountered the Mystery Man had looked into the name Herobrine and found that name to be frequently used by a Swedish gamer. After some further information gathering, it was revealed to be the brother of Notch, the game's developer. I personally emailed Notch and asked him if he had a brother. It took him a while, but he emailed me back a very short message. I did, but he is no longer with us. Notch. I haven't seen the Mystery Man since our first encounter, and I haven't noticed any changes to the world other than my own. I was able to press print screen when I first saw him. Here's the only evidence of his existence. Warning! Escalialet! 
Is this where the story originated? That's crazy. Who wrote this? How we feeling? Let's do a check-in. Is everybody doing all right? Too bad. We're gonna continue on. So, Jeff the Killer is probably, like, one of the most famous creepypastas, and I know nothing other than the picture that goes along with it. 31 minutes of reading. This story is super long. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? And it's estimated to be a 23 minute read. So everybody buckle in. So this was first posted August 12th, 2012. You wake up at 3 a.m. Disturbed by some subtle shifting sound within the room, just on the edge of hearing. Propping up on one arm, you survey the room looking for some source for the noise, hoping beyond hope that you won't find one. At first, your hopes are raised. Everything seems to be silent. Everything seems to be still. But it isn't. From behind the long, concealing drape of the curtain, a voice with flickering serpentine hiss whispers, <laughs> Suddenly, you know what's about to happen, and exactly who is waiting to meet you. Excerpt from a local newspaper. Ominous, unknown killer is still at large. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous, unknown killer is still on the rise. After little evidence has been found, a young boy states that he survived one of the killer's attacks and bravely tells his story. I had a bad dream, and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the boy. I saw that for some reason the windows was open even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like someone was watching me. I looked up and nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light, illuminating from behind my curtains, were a pair of two eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark, ominous eyes. They were bordered in black and just plain out terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth. A long, horrendous smile that made every hair on my body stand up. The figure stood there, watching me. Finally, after what seemed like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but said in only a way a madman could speak. What? He said, Good sleep. And let out a scream. That's what sent him at me. He pulled up a knife, aiming at my heart. He jumped on top of my bed. I fought him back. I kicked. I punched. I rolled around, trying to knock him off me. That's when my dad busted in. The man threw the knife. It went into my dad's shoulder. The man probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the police. They drove into the parking lot and ran towards the door. The man turned and ran down the hallway. As I came out of my room, I saw the window that was pointing towards the back of my house was broken. I looked out it to see him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I will never forget that face. Those cold evil eyes and that psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. Police are still on the look for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description of the story, please contact your local police department. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his brother... Lou? Uh. Jeff and his brother Leo couldn't complain, though. A new, better house. What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their neighbors came by. Hello, she said. I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and to introduce my son. She turns around and calls her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy said, hi, and ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret, and this is my husband Peter and my two sons, Jeff and Liu. They each introduced themselves and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday. Jeff and his brother were about to object when their mother said that they would love to. When Jeff and his family were done packing, Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb kid. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our neighbors. Now, we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and plopped down on his bed. He sat there looking at his ceiling when suddenly he got a weird feeling. Not so much pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. 
He heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, and he walked down to get it. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got ready for school. As he sat there eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. This time it was stronger. It gave him a slight tugging pain, but he once again dismissed it. As he and Liu finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop. They sat there waiting for the bus, and then, all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped over them, only inches above their laps. They both jumped in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed and turned back to them. He kicked his skateboard up and caught it with his hands. Ugh. The kid seemed to be about 12, one year younger than Jeff. He wears a narrow postal shirt and ripped blue jeans. Well, 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 it looks like we got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there's Keith. Jeff and Liu looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. Talk about a tub of lard. Ooh. The kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there is a small price for bus fare. If you catch my drift. Liu stood up ready to punch the lights out of the kid's eyes when one of his friends pulled a knife on him. I had hoped you would be more cooperative, but it seems we must do this the hard way. The kid walked up to Liu and took his wallet out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now, it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, but Liu gestured him to sit down. Jeff ignored him and walked up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my bro's wallet. Or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out of his own knife. Why does everyone have knives in this situation? When I was 13, I didn't have a knife. Oh, and what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in the nose. <clears throat> as Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed the kid's wrist and broke it. Okay, Jeff, chill out. It's not that serious. Randy screamed. <laughs> and Jeff grabbed the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but Jeff was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground. Keith lashed out at him, but Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground screaming. <coughs> Troy rushed him too, but Jeff didn't even need the knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach, and Troy went down. As he fell, he puked all over. Liu could do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how'd you was all he said. They saw the bus coming and knew they'd be blamed for the whole thing. Yeah, well, Jeff just stabbed a bunch of kids, so what do you expect? <laughs> so they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw the bus driver rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Liu made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen. Liu just thought of that as his brother beating up a few kids, but Jeff knew it was more. It was something scary. As he got that feeling, he felt how powerful it was, the urge to just hurt someone. He didn't like how it sounded, but he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entire day of school. Even as he walked home due to the whole thing near the bus stop, and how now he probably wouldn't be taking the bus anymore, he felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was, and he said in a somewhat ominous voice, It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down to find two police officers at the door, his mother looking back at him with an angry look. Jeff, these officers tell me that you attacked three kids, that it wasn't regular fighting, and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son! Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother that it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and Liu. Son, said one of the cops, we found three kids, two stabbed, one having a bruise on his stomach, and we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now what does that tell us? Jeff knew that it was no use. He could say him and Liu had been attacked, but then there was no proof it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they were fleeing, because truth be told, they were. What? So Jeff couldn't defend himself for Liu. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it, since it was he who beat up all the kids. Sir, it... it was me. I was the one who beat up the kids. Leo tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his partner and they both nod. <coughs> well, kid, looks like a year in juvie. Wait, says Leo. 
They all looked up to see him holding a knife. Oh, this again? The officers pulled their guns and locked them on Liu. It was me. I beat up those little punks. Have the marks to prove it. He lifted up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises, as if he was in a struggle. Son, just put the knife down, said the officer. Liu held up the knife and dropped it to the ground. He put his hands up and walked to the cops. No, Liu, it was me. I did it. Jeff had tears running down his face. Huh, poor bro, trying to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Liu out to the patrol car. Liu, tell them it was me. Tell them. I was the one who beat up those kids. Jeff's mother put her hands on his shoulders. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know it's Liu. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the car speeds off with Liu inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulls into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. Son, son, what is it? Jeff couldn't answer. His vocal cords were strained from crying. Instead, Jeff's mother walked his father inside to break the bad news to him as Jeff wept in the driveway. <laughs> After an hour or so, Jeff walked back into the house, seeing that his parents were both shocked, sad, and disappointed. He couldn't look at them. He couldn't see how they thought of Liu when it was his fault. He just went to sleep, trying to get the whole thing off his mind. Two days went by, with no word from Liu at JDC. No friends to hang out with, nothing but sadness and guilt. That is until Saturday, when Jeff has woken up by his mother with a happy, sunshiny face. Jeff! It's the day, she said as she opened up the curtains and let light flood into his room. What? What's today? Why, it's Billy's party. He was now fully awake. Mom, you're joking, right? You don't expect me to go to some kid's party after... There was a long pause. Jeff, we both know what happened. I think this party could be the thing that brightens up the past days. Now, get dressed. She is way too casual about her kids stabbing other kids and beating them up and then getting arrested and then going to jail. I think this whole family has issues. Jeff's mother walked out of the room and downstairs to get ready herself. He fought himself to get up. He picked out a random shirt and a pair of jeans and walked downstairs. He saw his mother and father all dressed up, his mother in a dress, and his father in a suit. He thought, why do they ever wear such fancy clothes to a kid's party? Son, is that all you're going to wear? Said Jeff's mom. Better than wearing too much, he said. His mother pushed down the feeling to yell at him and hit it with a smile. <laughs> now Jeff, we may be overdressed, but this is how you go if you want to make an impression, said his father. Jeff grunted, ugh, and went back to his room. I don't have any fancy clothes, he yelled downstairs. Just pick out something called his mother. He looked around in his closet for what he would call fancy. He found a pair of black dress pants he had for special occasions, and an undershirt. He couldn't find a shirt to go with it, though. <sighs> he looked around and found only striped and patterned shirts, none of which go with dress pants. Finally, he found a white hoodie and put it on. You're wearing that, they both said. His mother looked at her watch. Oh. No time to change. Let's just go. She said as she herded Jeff and his father out the door. They crossed the street over to Barbara and Billy's house. They knocked on the door, and at it appeared that Barbara, just like his parents, way overdressed. As they walked inside, all Jeff could see were adults. No kids. The kids are out in the yard. Jeff, how about you go and meet some of them, said Barbara. Jeff walked outside to a full yard of kids. They were running around in weird cowboy costumes and shooting each other with plastic guns. A pew pew. <laughs> he may as well be standing in a Toys R Us. Suddenly, a kid came up to him and handed him a toy gun and a hat. Hey, wanna play? He said. Uh, no kid. I'm way too old for this stuff. Yeah, all of 13 and you can't just play with the kids, okay, Jeff? The kid looked at him with a weird puppy dog face. Sweet. Fine, said Jeff. He put on the hat and started to pretend to shoot at the kids. Pew pew, pew pew. At first, he thought it was totally ridiculous, but then he started to actually have fun. It might not have been super cool, but it was the first time he had done something that took his mind off of Liu. So he played with the kids for a while until he heard a noise. A weird, rolling noise. Then it hit him. Randy, Troy, and Keith all jumped over to the fence on their skateboards. Jeff dropped the fake gun and ripped off the hat. Randy looked at Jeff with a burning hatred. Hello, Jeff, is it? He said, we have some unfinished business. 
Jeff saw his bruised nose. I think we're even. I beat the crap out of you, and you'll get my brother sent to JDC. Randy got an angry look in his eyes. Yeah! Oh no, I don't go for even. I go for winning. You may have kicked our asses that one day, but not today. As he said that, Randy pushed at Jeff. Uh, that is not correct. They both fell to the ground. Randy punched Jeff in the nose, and Jeff grabbed him by the ears and headbutted him. Jeff pushed Randy off of him, and both rose to their feet. Kids were screaming, and parents were running out of the house. Troy and Keith both pulled guns out of their pockets. Whoa, whoa. No one interrupts, or guts will fly, they said. Randy pulled a knife on Jeff and stabbed it into his shoulder. Jeff screamed and fell to his knees. Randy started kicking him in the face. After three kicks, Jeff grabs his foot and twists it, causing Randy to fall to the ground. Jeff stood up and walked towards the back door. Troy grabbed him. Needs some help? He picks Jeff up by the back of the collar and throws him through the patio door. As Jeff tries to stand up, he's kicked down to the ground. Randy repeatedly starts kicking Jeff until he starts to cough up blood. Come on, Jeff! Fight me! He picks Jeff up and throws him into the kitchen. Randy sees a bottle of vodka on the counter and smashes the glass over Jeff's head. Fight! He throws Jeff back into the living room. Come on, Jeff! Look at me! Jeff glances up, his face riddled with blood. I was the one who got your brother sent to JDC. And now you're just gonna sit here and let him rot in there for a whole year? You should be ashamed. Jeff starts to get up. Oh! Finally! You stand up and fight. Jeff is now to his feet, blood and vodka on his face. That would burn. Once again, he gets that strange feeling. The one in which he hasn't felt for a while. Finally, he's up, says Randy as he runs at Jeff. That's when it happens. Something inside Jeff snaps. His psyche is destroyed. All rational thinking is gone. All he can do is kill. He grabs Randy, and Pyle drives him into the ground. He gets on top of him, and punches him straight in the heart. The punch causes Randy's heart to stop. As Randy gasps for breath, Jeff hammers down on him. Punch after punch, blood gushes from Randy's body until he takes one final breath and dies. Everyone is looking at Jeff now. The parents, the crying kids, even Troy and Keith. Although they easily break from their gaze and point their guns at Jeff. <laughs> Jeff sees the guns trained on him, and runs for the stairs. As he runs, Troy and Keith let out fire on him, each shot missing. Jeff runs up the stairs. He hears Troy and Keith follow up behind. As they let out their final rounds of bullets, Jeff ducks into the bathroom. He grabs the towel rack and rips it off the wall. Troy and Keith race in. Knives ready. Troy swings his knife at Jeff, who backs away and bangs the towel rack into Troy's face. Troy goes down hard, and now all that's left is Keith. He's more agile than Troy, though, and ducks when Jeff swings the towel rack. He dropped the knife and grabbed Jeff by the neck. He pushed him up into the wall. A thing of bleach fell down on top of him from the top shelf. It burned both of them, and they both started to scream. Jeff wiped his eyes as best as he could. He pulled back the towel rack and swung it straight into Keith's head. As he lay there, bleeding to death, he let out an ominous smile. What's so funny? asked Jeff. Keith pulled out a lighter and switched it on. What's funny, he said, is that you're covered in bleach and alcohol. Jeff's eyes widened as Keith threw the lighter at him. As soon as the flame made contact with him, the flames ignited the alcohol and the vodka. While the alcohol burned him, the bleach burned his skin. Jeff let out a terrible screech as he caught on fire. He tried to roll out the fire, but it was no use. The alcohol had made him a walking inferno. He ran down the hall and fell down the stairs. Everybody started screaming as they saw Jeff. Now a man on fire dropped to the ground, nearly dead. The last thing Jeff saw was his mother and the other parents trying to extinguish the flame. That's when he passed out. When Jeff woke, he had a cast wrapped around his face. He couldn't see anything, but he felt a cast on his shoulder and stitches all over his body. He tried to stand up, but he realized that there was some tube in his arm, and when he tried to get up, it fell out and a nurse rushed in. I don't think you can get out of bed just yet! She said as she put him back in his bed and reinserted the tube. Jeff sat there, with no vision, no idea of what his surroundings were. Finally, after hours, he heard his mother. Honey, are you okay? she asked. Jeff couldn't speak, though. His face was covered, and he was unable to speak. Oh, honey, I have great news. After all the witnesses told the police that Randy confessed to trying to attack you, they decided to let Liu go. 
This made Jeff almost bolt up, stopping halfway, remembering the tube coming out of his arm. He'll be out by tomorrow, and then you two will be able to be together again. Jeff's mother hugs Jeff and says her goodbyes. The next couple of weeks were those where Jeff was visited by his family. Then came the day where all his bandages were to be removed. His family members were all there to see it what he would look like. As the doctors unwrapped the bandages from Jeff's face, everyone was on the edge of their seats. They waited until the last bandage holding the cover of his face was almost removed. Let's hope for the best, said the doctor. He quickly pulls the cloth, letting the rest fall from Jeff's face. His mother screams at the sight of his face. Leo and Jeff's dad stare awestruck at his face. What? What happened to my face? Jeff said. He rushed out of bed and ran to the bathroom. He looked in the mirror and saw the cause of the distress. His face! It... It's horrible! His lips were burnt to a deep shade of red. His face was a pure white color, and his hair singed from brown to black. He slowly put his hand to his face. It had a sort of leathery feel to it now. He looked back at his family. And back at the mirror? Jeff, said Leo. It's really not that bad. Not that bad, said Jeff. It's perfect! His family was equally surprised. Jeff started laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> I can't do it. His parents noticed that his left eye and hand were twitching. Uh, Jeff, are you okay? Okay? I've never felt more happy. Ha 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 ha! Look at me. This face goes perfectly with me. He couldn't stop laughing. He stroked his face, feeling it, looking at it in the mirror. What caused this? Well, you may recall, when Jeff was fighting Randy, something in his mind, his sanity, snapped. Now, he was left as a crazy killing machine. That is, his parents didn't know. Doctor, said Jeff's mom, is my son alright? You know, in the head? Oh yes! <laughs> This behavior is typical for patients that may have taken very large amounts of painkillers. If his behavior doesn't go away in a few weeks, bring him back here and we'll give him a psychological test. Oh, thank you, doctor. Jeff's mother went over to Jeff. Jeff, sweetie, it's time to go. Jeff looks away from the mirror. His face still formed into a crazy smile. <laughs> K, mommy. Ha, ha, ha. His mother took him by the shoulder and took him to get his clothes. This is what came in, said the lady at the desk. Jeff's mom looked down to see the black dress pants and white hoodie her son wore. Now they were clean of blood and now stitched together. Jeff's mother led him to his room and made him put his clothes on. Then they left not knowing that this was their final day of life. Later that night, Jeff's mother woke to a sound coming from the bathroom. It sounded as if someone was... crying. She slowly walked over to see what it was. When she looked into the bathroom, she saw a horrendous sight. Jeff had taken a knife and carved a smile into his cheeks. Jeff? What are you doing? Jeff looked over at his mother. Me! I couldn't keep smiling, Mommy. It hurt after a while. Now I can smile forever. Jeff's mother noticed his eyes, ringed in black. Jeff! Your eyes! His eyes were seemingly never closing. I couldn't see my face. I got tired and my eyes started to close. I burned out the eyelids so I could forever see myself. My new face. Jeff's mother slowly started to back away, seeing that her son was going insane. What's wrong, Mommy? Aren't I beautiful? Yes, son, she said. Yes, you are. Well, let me go get Daddy so he can see your face. She ran into the room and shook Jeff's dad from his sleep. Honey, get the gun. We... She stopped as she saw Jeff in the doorway holding a knife. Mommy, you lied. That's the last thing they hear as Jeff rushes them with the knife, gutting both of them. Brother Liu woke up, startled by some noise. He didn't hear anything else, so he just shut his eyes and tried to go back to sleep. As he was on the border of slumber, he got the strangest feeling that someone was watching him. He looked up before Jeff's hand covered his mouth. He slowly raised the knife, ready to plunge it into Liu. Liu thrashed here and there, trying to escape Jeff's grip. Shh, Jeff said. Just go to sleep. What did I just read? Really, it's about a time and a place. 2012... Even earlier, probably, actually. Origin-wise of the photos and whatnot. Like, it's about a time and a place. And we're no longer in that time, and we're no longer in that place. So it's hard to focus on me. It's hard to take stuff like this seriously now. Back then, people were so freaked out. So, uh, yeah, that was our creepypastas. 
Hope everybody's doing good. Hope everybody's feeling well. Hope you're not too scared, and I hope you sleep well tonight and every night for the rest of your life. God bless, and God protect, and God provide. The original stories that we have read today will all be linked down below if you want to read up more on them, or if you just want to check out like the history and origin of these stories yourself. So thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and hopefully I will see you all here next time.